I'm happy to share with you a few updates um, on the diagnosis and management of leptomeningeal disease. <clears throat> So just to dive in, it's estimated that about five to 50% of patients with cancer um, are diagnosed with leptomeningeal disease. Survival rates are dismal, um, and that's in part due to limited therapeutic options. The common offenders are lung, breast melanoma, hematological tumors also spread to the CSF space, as well as primary brain tumors. The molecular profile and the histology also influence uh, leptomeningeal spread, we've seen a higher, higher incidence with triple negative. In the, in the, in the, in the lung, lung, lung med space, uh, EGFR mutations are quite common. Tumor cells uh, gain access to the CSS space via the hematogenous spread. Additionally, recent preclinical data have shown that the overexpression of complement three by tumor cells also cause a breach in the blood-brain barrier in the choroid plexus. The study also showed that increased CSF uh, C3 complement three also influences the clinical course. Patients do worse with, when the level is higher and that by blocking that pathway, you can attenuate disease progression. A human study corroborated those findings and also found increased uh, complement levels. Not only did they find increased complement levels, but cytokine levels were increased as well. TGF beta uh, was also increased in patients who were exposed or treated with BRAF inhibitors. It was found that TGF beta actually uh, was protective. Patients present with a myriad of uh, complaints uh, owing to the diffuse nature of the disease. We see it quite common headache, creating nerve neuropathies, encephalopathy, nausea, vomiting back pain if they have spinal meds and infarcts. On imaging, uh, we look for uh, uh, enhancement in the cerebral cortex. I often always look for uh, enhancement in the cerebellar folia as well. Tumor cells can invade the ependymal lining and if this progresses, patients develop hydrocephalus that may warrant uh, uh, a v VP shunt. Here's a patient with leptomeningeal spread to the spine. Uh, it's a young guy with uh, a mixopapular ependymoma, no brain disease, just disease confined to the CSF, the, the, the spine. Uh, Leah actually radiated him with proton and she's gonna update us later on proton therapy. There's diffuse, lumpy, bumpy nodular enhancement throughout the spine. The gold standard uh, diagnosis is uh, detection of malignant cells by cytology. Often uh, pleocytosis and elevated protein, low glucose is also helpful. Sometimes, well, you should check for uh, raised ICP or, or opening pressure. Full cytometry can be uh, beneficial for hematological uh, tumors. Treatment is palliative. Uh, surgery can be uh, incorporated for VP shunt. Uh, for bulky disease, uh, radiation can be employed. Uh, IT chemo, systemic therapies, and interthecal biologics are still experimental. There's very interesting data with uh, IT rituximab and, and Herceptin uh, for breast cancer. Rituximab, uh, of obviously, for CNS lymphoma. There are limitations to conventional CSF analysis, uh, the processing, it, it needs to be done rapidly. You, these cells are fragile and friable, so they can disintegrate over time. Uh, cytology is also inconclusive. Uh, very often we see atypical cells, suspicious cells, uh, high false negative rates requiring multiple, multiple LPs or three LPs uh, increase the, uh, to increase the diagnostic yield. It's examiner dependent, and we know from Dr. Glantz study that we need about 10 cc's uh, for accurate analysis. That's not all, always done um, that I've noticed in practice. Due to limitations in, in cytology, there's been increased focus on refining uh, methods to accurately diagnose leptomeningeal disease. Nowadays, or over the past decade, a lot of work has been looking at circulating tumor cells, uh, cell-free DNA, next generation sequencing of cell-free DNA and cell-free RNA. 
The detection of liquid biopsy in the blood served as a foundation for research in the CSS space. There's a lot of methods that are available. Um, that's beyond the scope of this talk, but just wanted you to know that, be aware that there are a lot of methods that are available. But by and large, uh, label detection, uh, label deten dependent detection is, is, is widely available, widely used. Uh, the idea here is that uh, uh, these tumor components or cell cellular components are stained with uh, immuno immuno immunofluorescent antibodies and using uh, um, fluorescent microscopy, you can detect uh, tumor cells and separate them from white blood cells. So a tumor cell, the, 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 the phenotype, they are uh, EPCAM positive, uh, and that's uh, 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 um, cytokeratin, cytokeratin positive, DAPI positive, which stains for the nucleus, and CD4 negative, so you can exclude contaminants. The detection rate is in the order of six, 76 to 100 percent, and we know cytology on the first tap, it's about 67 percent. Next generation sequencing is also employed. We also get that data. Uh, fish studies can also help uh, for targeted therapy. NGS uh, all, may also capture clonal divergence. Uh, here's a study looking at samples of patients. Um, uh, CSF was sent in parallel with plasma and tissue. And what we're seeing here is a higher copy number variant in red in the CSF versus tissue in plasma, suggesting clonal divergence. They're emerging uh, uh, next generation sequencing. Some is still being verified in, for example, in melanoma, HMD45 and SOX10 still, still being verified. Here's a patient of mine, a 66, 56 year old woman, HER2 positive breast. She was diagnosed in 2018. About two years later, she was diagnosed with a MET, had that resected. Um, about a year later, she developed lesion suspicious for leptomeningeal spread. Cytology was done by her primary care, a primary uh, 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 medical oncologist. Uh, it was negative. Four cc's of CSF was sent. She was referred to me for further workup. I repeated the scan about a few weeks later. There was bulky nodular disease in the cerebellar folia. Spinal MRI was negative, and, and based on clinical grounds, I, I diagnosed her with lepto. Uh, Zach Litvak actually put in Omeyer, and, and we treated her. So baseline, uh, CSF was suspicious, again, atypical cells. And in parallel, I sent off CTC analysis and detected 14 cells that were present. Uh, first study showed uh, her 2 gene amplification. She was commenced on IT uh, Herceptin. I treated her twice weekly for four weeks. Repeat scan showed partial response. Cytology was negative. I decided to add methotrexate to, to the regimen. So she got combo IT Herceptin plus uh, methotrexate. She got treated for four weeks, twice weekly. She had a nice response, complete response that was sustained over time. Uh, CTCs was also sent to track response and it was negative. I saw her this week, her scan this week was also stable, no disease complete response, she's doing well. She's about nine months out. A phase one, phase two study uh, led by uh, Priya Kumtakar looked at uh, intrathecal herceptin for her patients with leptomeningeal disease. This was a, a great study. Um, the MTD was determined to be eight, eight milligrams. Uh, patients which received treatment twice weekly for four weeks, once, once weekly for four weeks, and biweekly maintenance. The study showed a median overall survival of 12 months, which is well above uh, historical controls. The novel taxane derivative ANG1005 has excellent blood brain penetration. And it, the study also looked at patients with breasts with brain meds and leptomeningeal disease. Response rates were in the order of about 20 to 25%. In HER2 negative, the median overall survival is about eight, eight months. Patients also had uh, durable uh, uh, responses and, and stable disease. Serial sampling of, uh, of, 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 of um, CSF may also help be helpful as a prognostic marker or as a therapeutic response. He has a study by 
Rashna Malani and colleagues, um, patients were on clinical trial and what they did was serial sampling and they showed nice response rates. Over time, patients on average received about 20 to 22 cycles of chemo. In a, in a, in a small sample of those patients, there was an uptake, a spike in, 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 in circulating tumor cells that portended poor survival. And in, in fact, about four to eight weeks following this uptake or the spike, there was radiographic evidence of disease progression. Here's another patient of mine, a 75-year-old woman, BRAF wild type metastatic melanoma. Screening images showed uh, susceptibility, art susceptibility artifact on GRE. It was questionable for leptomeningeal disease. Uh, there was no enhancement on, on post-contrast. Um, there was no, no, no obvious bleeding on pre-contrast, um, but I did tap her. Cytology was suspicious on the first tap. The second tap is also suspicious, but I sent R for um, CTC enumeration. 4,000 cells, about 4,000 cells were detected and the patient actually went to hospice and passed away about two months later. There are other emerging therapies. For example, immune checkpoint inhibitors. There, there's new data that's emerged for that. Um, BRAF, BRAF MEK inhibitors, there's also data. It's not as durable but it's still in progress. Tregresso is also available. It is new data showing for T790 mutation pos positive lung cancer. So to conclude, I think CTC enumeration may provide an accurate assessment of CNS tumor burden. It's helpful for pretreatment staging, for prognostication. It may be helpful to track uh, 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 response to therapy and for clinical trials and next generation sequencing to help molecular characterization, characterization will be helpful for targeted therapy. Thank you, and I can take any questions. Uh, it's, it's Zach here. I'm just checking the chat, see if we have any questions oh, okay. so far. Uh, no, we're, we're good. We don't have any questions. I, I do have one question for you. Yeah. Um, you know, it seems like your the domain of your talk is one of those areas that's not necessarily clearly standard of care for treatment of some of these things. And so right. my, my question is, you know, is this a, a one to two year time frame before we see this more common than not in terms of managing some of these leptomeningeal metastases? Or do you think it's, it's still going to sit in the realm of secondary therapies after they've failed some of the more tried and true treatments? You know, that's a good question. I think, I think you know, the efforts, efforts are being made now to, to harmonize the way we diagnose and treat patients with lepto. Uh, I think we may be just at the cusp of, in the realm of the one to two years, where it's mm -hmm. going to make, make a difference and hopefully become standard of care. And I don't, I don't think we should do away with the old drugs. Like I said, you know, I incorporated meth methotrexate and I, you know, I'm a firm believer in com combination therapy. So for that patient with Herceptin, I added methotrexate. So um, I think the treatment paradigm may change within about the, I would say within five years. And just to follow up to that, you know, for those of us who aren't as close to this as you are, historically, when there's leptomeningeal spread of a non-CNS cancer, that's typically considered to be the beginning of the end, so to speak. Right, it's, it's and, almost doomsday, yeah. Yeah, and so I'm wondering if the molecular diagnoses that you're talking about and some of the more advanced biologic and immunologic treatments, are we sort of on the cusp of where we were 10 years ago with some of the systemic cancers and the transition from old guard treatments to more targeted therapy once we understood the genomics. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, you know, targeted therapy is kind of, is revolutionizing, you know, the way we treat brain tumors now. And we'll learn more about that later. Um, Dr. Sharma wrote a nice paper that was published recently about, you know, therapeutics and, and targeted therapy for, for, for met metastasis. Um, I think that's the wave of the future. And I think um, soon that that will evolve into standard of care. Awesome. Yeah.